the picked headgear model to, uh, you know, to uh, for one of the sets. Yeah. So yeah. they actually reconstructed the yeah. pit head. Pit headgear as it was uh, before the pit were uh, demolished. Yeah. So, so yeah. can, can we get a picture of that? Yeah, so. that's been sorted out for this afternoon. I think Nick's doing a piece on that. Yeah, that's uh, there's a picture with Don. Yeah. It went well. Um, rather unusual when a councillor who claims that the town's in danger of becoming like Las Vegas because there's <laughs> so many uh, betting shops and little else. I think there's a, an application for a third that's uh, just being considered. And he says that... You know, Do, does he actually, has he used that phrase? Las yeah, Vegas. the Las Vegas. I think the Las Vegas <coughs> in Barnsley. As you know, um, the bell ringers across at St Mary's Church here uh, won a top Yorkshire uh, championships a couple of weeks ago. Tomorrow night I've asked Nick to go along and actually be taught how to yeah, that taught be good. The, the art of campanology. Yeah, that should be good. Good, okay, well, that's a, a good start to the week. Well, right, thanks. Sir. It's a dinky thing, isn't it? Splendid, no light like real thing, then? Eh? Is it no light like real thing? No. <laughs> it might be from about... Well, I like to think that I do the more no, colourful uh, pieces, the uh, that, the happier no, pieces. No, no, no. I, I, the hard news stories uh, go elsewhere. I, I'm the man that uh, jollies things up. Right. How old are you, Brian? For many years, I worked for British Steel in an office, and uh, believe me, that was mind-numbingly boring. Now this, I get out to meet people, uh, I'll go for the local angle, I'll talk to the local people. How realistic is it? What does it mean to you? Are you offended by it even? Uh, so, so soon after it being demolished? Because it was economic. Uneconomic, should I say. Hi, I've spoken to two of your colleagues. Yeah, I'm sorry to drop on you unannounced. No, no, but we've been dealing with two of your colleagues. Right. Well, what, all I've come down and for today... And we've been today, dealing with Yorkshire as well. All, all I've come down for today, really, is just for a chat about the pit headgear. This is just crazy to just turn up unannounced. We've got... I, I understood it okay. arranged, arranged. No one's arranged anything. No, no one's okay. arranged anything. So, and, you know, and I've really, I've been dealing with all your colleagues. I mean, will you answer yeah. a few questions right here? No, no, not okay. at all. That's okay. Go on, let's do red room. Just that red room. We're on for a pint. <laughs> Great waste of time, that. Right. <laughs> nah, it won't. We'll, it'll, we'll get something out of it. The producer wouldn't talk at all. You've probably heard. No. Did he not phone through to office? When? No. Oh, oh I, uh, yeah, give me a ticking off. Yeah. About what? Wasting his time. Well, they've been wasting my time and all, asking oh, for uh, things well, like exactly. copies of newspapers and photographs of Arthur Scargill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Very peeved he was. But what's that headgear look like? The photo? Um, not very convincing, to be honest. I've thanks, talked to thanks, a lot Nick, of, you've done a good job there. I've talked to a lot of <laughs> ex colliers and they're not very convinced with it either. But, uh, I don't know what photographs going to come out like. Yeah. It might look convincing to a southerner from about half a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right. Sorry. Neither have I. And I think if you asked our chief photographer, Don Oakes, to uh, go out and cover uh, an atomic bomb that had exploded in the Barnsley Town Hall. I'd, he'd probably say that he'd done it last year. Um, he's, a, he's a delight, absolutely delightful guy. He's been with us about um, 30 years. Um, he came from the army. He's the sort of character that every newspaper should have, and he's got the most tremendous fund of uh, stories. What for the wife? Let's get it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> So come showtime on Monday, it was business as usual and straight into the high octane version of the Wild West musical. In such polished hands, it's amazing what you can do with a few planks of wood and a little Monroe wiggle. One minute the planks act as a saloon bar. The next, they are fences holding back an excited crowd, and then they are transformed into wagons and stagecoaches. Walt Bywater is the sort of guy that any editor would describe as a find. I just write a weekly column uh, about my past when I was a child down in Mitchell's Terrace, using the like to hear about muck tax and playing games and that type of thing. Like they say, I've always been able to tell a good tale. And it's just a matter of putting it down in writing. 
they've found out recently that uh, William Wordsworth, the great Lakeland poet, had a boundary background through his parents or grandparents. So what I've done a piece, what would have happened, what his poetry would have been like if he hadn't moved to the Lakeland? Oh, Willie Wordsworth, what a hard look they had. If their parents hadn't had restless feet, that had been a boundary lad. They wrote about flowers whilst on hills, that's it. But if they'd have spent their life in Barnsley, they'd have wrote about backyard muck and pits. They wrote poems of larks and thrushes, singing fit to book. In some lonely spot, a corner in Barnsley churchyard would have been thy lot. And the epitaph on the grave would sit. Here lies a Barnsley lad who could write a bit. <laughs> I like that, I like that myself, actually. <laughs> Oh, hello, oh, yeah. Central Army. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Cian Henderson here, the Barnsley Chronicle. Hello, uh, I was wanting to do a condition check again, if I may, on uh, Clive Cawthrow. He's got to go on that check. Yeah, he's still comfortable, is he? Fair enough. OK, no change. Thanks a lot. Bye. First thing on Monday morning, one of the young reporters had a story about the mayor being arrested. She picked this up from her contacts over the weekend, and we were certainly the first to have it. Uh, he's been arrested uh, on fraught charges and he's resigned so that's obviously um, a good story for us the only problem with being weekly of course is that by the time it comes to Thursday everybody's trawled over that story so it's not quite as fresh um, as we hoped it might be but it was a good start to the week so how did you, did you enjoy well, it? I, I mean immediately as I let go of the rope it was uh, eyes up to see what the hell was happening and it was <laughs> shouting at me we, we actually went up into the bells to get some better pictures. Oh, right, right. I uh, took one of the younger ones up there. Yeah. <laughs> getting on a bit. And uh, we got amongst the bells. Excellent. Which they actually <laughs> chimed while we were up there. What was it like, didn't they? Very. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, it should be all right. Perfect. Good piece. Thanks. That's that. Good. Apart from our team of trained reporters, we have um, a, an, another wider team who we say are the ears and eyes of the Barnsley Chronicle. Our reporters are too. But these are the people who contribute to our district paragraph and our district pages. And we've got all sorts of people. We've got teachers, we've got people who worked in industry, uh, we've got retired people. Um, Many of them have been with us for many years, and they really do know the patches. Yes, well, my name is Lynn, Lynn Nixon, and I'm a local correspondent for the Barnsley Chronicle, and I cover the Carlton, South Hensley, and Dry Hill areas for the paper. And basically, you keep your ear to the ground and listen for bits of gossip and notices in post, post office windows are a marvellous place to have a look as well, so, and keep in touch with people. I think the, pe the appeal of a local paper is that you read it and you prob it's about your area and the people that you know uh, and what's going off in your area, um, whereas the, the national papers, um, it's probably to do with down south a lot more and it's really got to be something severe up north <laughs> for it to make the paper, but it, it's about it's about us, it's about our area um, and the people that we know. What the plan, what the plan is, is we're going to do an insider piece, aren't we? And then uh, a shortish piece on the front, yeah. um, uh, giving the latest position. I, I think the piece on the front must be, we've got to ask, is, is he going to be fit enough to face, you know, to uh, um, go to the magistrates? That, that yeah. really is going to be the story. If he's so ill, um, as it seems to be at the moment, <coughs> we might have a, a fresh line on the fact that uh, you know, he's so seriously ill that we're going to have to put off the any any sort of hearing. Yeah. <coughs> so we may have to go on that, um, yeah. which will give us at least gives a fresh line from mm. you know the, the what everybody else has had. I go down to the market as often as I can because I know it's a great place to find uh, offbeat stories. Um, there are great many characters down there and they're always willing to talk unashamedly uh, it leads to some great lines which we very often feed the ferret with that's the line over there can you see him he's snoring it's my stage act that almost sends him to sleep <laughs> where are they 
The ferrets are column uh, where we take a sideways look at people, uh, the funny things they do, the funny things they say, things that they might be embarrassed about, but uh, it's all tongue in cheek. Oh, they've got them in my fish. Oh, right. She's got muscles as well. I've seen them. No. <laughs> not them, not them, so <laughs> Them, so what you buy at fish market. You're jealous, right. got Good morning, we have office. Can I help you? Yeah. I was saying yesterday, Judith, I mean, normally uh, I don't like to go without a face or a picture at the top, but I think that, that's such a striking image, mm. isn't it, for one, if it's yeah. used big. I think that the excuse is that people are just, just be struck, you know, what the hell yeah. is this doing, page one. So, top. yeah, so if we go at the top, I think with that one. I'm from the chronic last book, I've had to mind before. Uh, yes. No, have there been a bomb found? Or there was, yes. There was? Yes. What was it? Can you describe no, it? Uh, no, I didn't get anywhere near it. Oh. <laughs> so who are the army people? Uh, well, uh, explosive ordnance. And they've done what with it? Uh, I believe they're taking it they away. They take yes. Bob said to phone as soon as I've got anything on this bomb thing. The army people have just left. I met them at the entrance. Um, it's a mortar that they found. A mortar. Yes. They've, ta they've taken it away with them. An army bomb disposal unit was rushed to Pennystone yesterday lunchtime when a workman unearthed a live bomb on the former camel laid site at Springvale. The 14-acre industrial site is being cleared and levelled by its new owner, businessman Stephen Green. We started off planning on Monday and we thought we had a fair idea of what was going to go in the paper. Some of those things are going to go in, but things have changed enormously. Even since this morning, uh, we, we thought we'd got page one mapped out. Um, then suddenly, uh, today, we hear that um, a widow in Elsica is being sued by a bank for uh, a quarter of a million pounds that her late husband, it's a, it's a debt that her late husband had and it's accrued interest. So that's a good story. And then uh, suddenly the phone rang and there was a bomb scare at Penniston and it appears as though uh, a live bomb, Second World War bombs being found. So we've got to accommodate that. Then we had another terrifically good story about um, a mother who'd uh, described her son as the naughtiest boy in Barnsley some years ago has now been described herself by her father as the worst mother in Barnsley because she's allegedly abandoned her children. So that's another story that we've got to get in as well. So, um, you know, the plans have got to go to one side and we start doing page one again. But that's how it goes and uh, we've still got time. I think Judith Halkerston's got probably the, the nightmare job on the Chronicle. Um, the Chronicle isn't just one paper, we do seven editions of it. We also do three editions of um, uh, another um, free newspaper called the Sheffield Trader and an edition of The Independent, so that's sort of 11 newspapers in one week. Those all go through the production department and Judith is the production editor who's uh, got responsibility for uh, making sure that all these things come out. I'm glad I don't. Well, all the reporters copy all the photographers pictures and things come into here and it's here that we actually decide where the various stories are going whether they're worthy of the page lead whether they you know the pictures should be in color black and white that sort of thing the front pages we, we've given up on it to this stage really there's so much happening it, you know we could have done it three or four times and it would have still um you know would still be now starting from scratch again so we just have to work until it's done really um it'll be probably about eight o'clock tonight when we get it finished the story comes about through two ladies who live in barnes actually who contacted us and told us of this story about the ghost that's meant to supposedly haunt Stock Stocksbridge bypass um, <clears throat> now we've had plenty of people who claim to have seen it um, and we did a story about their sighting supposedly um, so we thought one night maybe we could pop up there ourselves and see if the, the stories were true oh dear right there's no two lads come on let's go back the reports that we've got are of um, sort of a hooded figure floating around the, uh, the bypass area. So that's all we're going to look out for. I think it'll be easy enough to spot. It dates back to the 14th century when uh, the Lord of Worthley ordered his soldiers to kill some religious leaders.